Cardia model. So let's start with the assumptions here. Two countries home and foreign. You can think of one country is Denmark and the other country is the rest of the world. Then we have two goods, wheat and cloth. Why wheat and cloth? Well, because this is a model of 200 years ago, and so let's keep it to simple products. They were exported back then. Labor is the only factor of production. And the technology for the home country is going to be represented by this marginal product of labor. So here we have the marginal product of labor in the wheat sector, it's four. So one worker can produce four units of wheat, bushels of wheat. I'm never going to say bushels anymore, we just say wheat. And then uh, the same worker can also produce two units of cloth. Now, what do we do with this information? What we're going to represent what the home country can produce is what it's called the production possibility frontier. It's going to, it's going to represent all the combinations of wheat and cloth that the home country can produce. The production possibility frontier is the PPF, is telling us what the home country can produce efficiently, meaning when all workers are employed here. And so how do we draw that? Well, you know, it's going to be a straight line because I said the marginal product of labor is constant. And to draw it, to draw it you basically first look at the maximum amount of cloth and wheat that you can produce, and then you trace a line. We said that the marginal product of labor in wheat is four. So one worker can produce four units of wheat. If everybody is working in the wheat sector, we have four times 25, the number of workers. And that's 100, the maximum amount of wheat that we can produce. If we do the same thing for cloth, though, we remember the marginal product of labor in cloth is two. Two times 25, the number of workers is 50. So this is the point in which everybody works in the cloth sector and they can produce 50 units. There's no, this is the opportunity cost of the good that is on the x axis. What is this law? And this law, you know, is the rise of the run, right? How much you give up of whatever you have on the vertical axis to increase the horizontal axis by one unit. Now, the slope of this production possibility frontier here is minus one half. Obviously, the opportunity cost of wheat is, you know, one half cloth. Okay, so now let's look at the foreign economy. What do we have here? Foreign economy. 100 workers, a oh, bigger economy than home. Marginal product of labor in wheat and cloth is one unit. So you see what we're doing here? We're making our life more difficult by thinking that there is a home country which is much better than the foreign economy. And what we want to show here is that that's, that doesn't matter. The foreign economy we're still going to ask for something, and that's going to be good both for the poor and the home economy. So, here, you know, you can, you can draw the production possibility frontiers as we did with the home economy. Easy. And here, the slope is one. So, recall, the production possibility, the slope of the production possibility frontier, without the negative sign, is the opportunity cost of wheat. So, that's telling you that we have one additional unit of wheat, you have to give up one unit of cloth. The country has a comparative advantage in a good if it has the lowest opportunity cost in producing that good. So, to figure out which country has a comparative advantage in what, just do a little table here. And here we have for the home economy, what we did before, one half of the slope of the production possibility frontier. That is the opportunity cost of wheat. Is how many units of cloth you give up to get some wheat. The reciprocal of that, too, is the opportunity cost of cloth. So how much wheat you give up to get cloth. For the foreign economy, we picked one and one, so the foreign costs are the same, to give up one unit of wheat, same in a way numerically, obviously you cannot compare uh, cloth and wheat. 
to give up to have one additional unit of wheat, you give up one yard of cloth. To give to get one additional unit of cloth, you give up one unit of wheat. Okay. So who has a comparative advantage in producing cloth? Who is the country with the lowest opportunity cost in producing cloth? Well, that's the foreign economy because one is less than two. So what this is saying is that basically when you move workers in the foreign economy towards producing more cloth, they're giving up less wheat than the home economy. So here you can you, you should think you know in the margin what margin wise you know you have a worker where should you move it to? Well, if you have one worker in the foreign economy moving it to the cloth industry loses you less wheat than if you have a home worker and you move it to the cloth industry. Okay. So same thing for wheat here. Wheat the opportunity cost that's the lowest is for the home economy, right. and so. That means that the home economy has a comparative advantage in wheat. And that's because if you produce an additional unit of wheat in the home economy, you give up less, way less cloth than the foreign economy. Trade is going to be determined by the comparative advantage. Home has a comparative advantage in wheat, so it's going to export wheat. Foreign has a comparative advantage in cloth, and therefore it's going to export cloth. So to wrap up, trade patterns, who exports what, who imports what, is determined by comparative advantage. The main point of the Ricardian model. And the second point is that trade is a good thing, at least in aggregate, because the utility function is higher in both countries after trade.